What's up folks, Crazy for Games here, bringing you another GTA Mission Facts video. I've done Vice City in GTA 3, and now it's time for San Andreas. I know quite a few people have been looking forward to this, and it's finally here. This is one fact about every mission in the game, including the side missions, and, yep, the mini-games. Just to make you aware that this video covers the PC version of the game, so some things may be slightly different on other versions. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. There's a lot to cover this time. Here is one fact about every mission in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. The very first mission is called In The Beginning. The only way to see the mission's title is by getting enough money to buy a safe house then saving and looking at the save files. In Big Smoke, CJ looks at a photo of his deceased mother, Beverly. She appears to have the same character model as one of the game's pedestrians. In Sweet and Kendall, if the Ballas member in the car shoots at you when you're in Ballas territory, any ballers who are on foot will shoot at the car, even though they're in the same gang. In Rider, you can't skip the cutscene outside the barber shop unless you fail the mission and retry it. Many speedrunners do this by destroying Rider's car. You'll fail tagging up turf if you replace the spray can with a camera or a fire extinguisher. In cleaning the hood, Sweet goes to get something from his fridge. There's actually nothing inside the fridge, except a little green box. In drive through even though you go to Cluck and Bell, the box that Ryder takes from Big Smoke has a Burger Shop logo on it. Trash can bitch. In Nines and AKs, when we first meet Emmett, the shirt under his jacket is red. Once the cutscene is over, it changes to white. You'll fail drive-by if you get out of Sweet's car and abandon your homies. Told you he was a buster. Damn, he shook us. In Sweet's girl, it's not possible to use an ambulance to pick up Sweet and his girlfriend, even though it's a fast vehicle with four seats. In Caesar Vial Pando, one of the gang members who confronts CJ has the same character model as the guy being beaten up by T-Bone in the introduction movie. In High Stakes Low Rider, before you drive into the red marker at the starting line, your opponents are members of Caesar's gang, the Aztecas. But once the race begins, they become ordinary NPCs. In Home Invasion, if you kill the sleeping colonel with a sniper rifle, the noise meter will stay empty making the mission easier. In Catalyst, if you stop a certain distance away from the train and zoom in with a camera, you'll see the gang members in the distance remaining idle. Once you get close enough, they'll start fighting. In Robbing Uncle Sam, if you destroy the crates, you'll find health, armour and weapon pickups. Just don't destroy too many or you'll fail the mission. What you playing at, CJ? OG Loke is the first mission in the GTA series to include the trip skip feature, which allows you to skip to a later part of the mission after a failed attempt, provided you don't load a save file. Running Dog is the only mission for Big Smoke that does not involve motorbikes. In Wrong Side of the Tracks, a broken down car is scripted to appear on the train tracks and will explode when the train hits it. However, if you kill all the Vagos beforehand, the car will not explode. Just Business is the only mission for Big Smoke that does not involve the Vagos. All the enemies in this mission are members of the Russian Mafia. In Life's a Beach, 
you're instructed to take the sound van to a garage in Commerce. According to an unused phone conversation, the garage belongs to Ryder's homie, LB. Log man, don't be playing with me. Cool it, CJ! Cool it! Half of Los Santos looking for this damn van. Okay, okay! Drop it off at LB's garage in Commerce! Thank you! During the opening cutscene in Mad Dog's Rhymes, OG Log and CJ look at themselves in the bathroom mirror. Wait, what mirror? In management issues, you're instructed to kill Mad Dog's manager by driving off a pier at the beach. You can actually drive into any body of water, as long as it's deep enough. In House Party, the Tahomas near the bridge are bulletproof and fireproof. You'll have to push them to your garage because they're locked. By the way, the Tahoma outside CJ's house is also bulletproof and fireproof, but these features will be lost once the mission is over. In Burning Desire, one of the gang members outside the house appears to be using a phone. He's actually holding a pistol, not a phone. In Grey Imports, you can kill an enemy in a unique way by shooting some crates above him. Doberman was originally a mission for Crash, not Sweet, and instead of going to Glen Park to take over a ball as territory, you would go to Islo Santos and kill a guy known as Poncho before he gets arrested. You get over there and freeze that bust in East Los Santos, and Poncho doesn't make it into custody. You get me? Yeah, whatever, man. In Los Sepulchros, once Sweet and the gang members have climbed over the cemetery wall, you won't fail the mission if you destroy Sweet's car. In Reuniting the Families, you will always receive an ordinary shotgun after you arrive at the motel, even if you had a sawn-off or combat shotgun in your inventory. In the Green Sabre, the camera that Pulaski gives to CJ looks different to the one used during gameplay. In Badlands, if you replace the camera with a spray can or fire extinguisher, you'll be told to get a new camera once you've killed the snitch. First Date is also the name of a mission in GTA 4. If you kill the guys who chase you during Tanker Commander, go to the nearby fuel station once the mission is passed. This saddler is bulletproof, fireproof, explosion-proof and damage-proof. All you have to do is take it to your garage. Body Harvest is also the name of another video game made by Rockstar North, back when they were called DMA Design. Believe it or not, it's possible to fail King in Exile by getting killed or busted while taking the phone call from Catalina. However, if this happens, the mission won't start when you walk into the red marker again, preventing you from continuing through the game. Word of advice? Don't save. In first base, where is Catalina hiding before she ambushes CJ? In the nearby truck wreckage. Hey baby, I'm sorry, we got off on the wrong foot. Shit. Now where is this stupid bitch? Uh, Here, cabron. Who's the bitch now, eh? In Against All Odds, the safe in the betting shop looks very similar to the safe in Tommy's mansion in Vice City. The cabin door at Fern Ridge is a different colour during the opening cutscene in Gone Courting. This is also the case in Made in Heaven. You'll fail local liquor store if the robbers drive all the way to the trailer park in Las Colinas. Girl, you are a fucking idiot. Unless you're in close proximity. Small Town Bank is the only time you'll see rural cops riding police bikes, 
instead of the usual motorcycle cops. During the phone call that triggers Woozy Moo, CJ is told to meet Caesar and Kendall south of Montgomery. However, Kendall doesn't even appear during the mission. Sorry, Holmes. I had no idea when the race would be. During the cutscenes in Farewell My Love, the ZR350 has a reflective paint job and default wheels. But during gameplay, it's black with off-road wheels. In Are You Going to San Fierro, you don't have to use the flamethrower to destroy the weed. You can also use molotovs, explosives, and even a combine harvester. In Wear Flowers in Your Hair, unique icons appear on the radar when you're instructed to go to the hospital and police station. In 555 Wee Tip, once you return to the DA's car, you won't fail the mission if you kill the DA. Another DA will appear inside the car at the end, and the dead body will stay on the ground. Do you know who you're fucking with here? I'll have your bad, you moron! In Deconstruction, the foreman says up to eight different things when you're pushing the portable toilet. Oh, Dad, no! Oh, Dad, oh, I'm gonna blow! Oh, my stuff! It's, it's ruined! Oh god, the dead! Please, somebody help! I'm gonna throw- Oh, oh, oh my own shit! Shouldn't have had that goddamn curry! There are also two additional lines that are not used. Oh god, is that corn? Oh, it's all in my mouth! In Photo Opportunity, if you fly above the area where you meet Caesar, you'll see a huge red marker. Once you get close enough, the marker will disappear and Caesar will spawn. In Jizzy, if you follow the preacher for long enough, he'll head out into the countryside. In T-Bone Mendez, it's possible to kill three of the bikers from a distance before triggering the chase, thereby making it easier to collect some of the packages. I recommend using the ordinary rifle for this, because if you use a sniper rifle, you can only kill one of them. In Mike Torino, once you get in the car, you can then get in a different vehicle and rescue Torino without taking T-Bone with you. Shit, there they are. In Outrider, you are given a sniper rifle and a rocket launcher, which spawn next to the bike and the van. However, if you already have those weapons, and enough ammo for them, they won't spawn. In Snail Trail, if you're quick enough, you can board the reporter's train instead of having to follow it, allowing you to skip to Los Santos. In Ice Cold Killer, if you destroy Jizzy's car before you go inside the club, he'll try to escape on a Pizza Boy moped. Did your pizza not arrive on time? Blame Jizzy. In Pier 69, if you destroy the boats that Ryder swims to, he'll swim to the nearby island instead. In Torino's last flight, if you follow the helicopter for long enough, it will land at a safe house in the countryside where you'll be ambushed. You'll then have a short amount of time to destroy the helicopter, otherwise you'll fail the mission. In Air Raid, if you input a weapon set cheat, the minigun will be replaced, making the mission impossible to complete. Although the heat-seeking rocket launcher does provide some amusement. In supply lines, the plane runs on fuel. Originally, it ran on a battery. Watch your battery, Carl! Only half the charge is left! Your battery's nearly flat! Hurry up! In New Model Army, you can also use barrels to destroy Berkeley's tanks. You don't need to use bombs. In Mountain Cloud Boys, even though you're told to stick close to Woozy, you can just run straight to the gate. Ah, we're here! This way! In Ranfa Lee, 
the gates at the back of the airport are locked, even if your flying skill is high enough. In Lure, the rancher is damage proof until the mission is over. In Amphibious Assault, you can skip the swimming sections by climbing out of the water and stealing the dinghy nearby. This also allows you to get to and from the tanker more quickly. In the Da Nang Thang, if your maximum health has been increased by completing Paramedic, you will lose some health after freeing the refugees. In Ye Ka Boom Boom, the Tampa's number plate reads Time Bomb. In zeroing in, you can intercept the target car more quickly by taking a shortcut through the construction site. In Test Drive, the target cars in the showroom are locked before you trigger the cutscene. During the opening cutscene in Customs Fast Track, CJ and Kendall talk about Sweet being in prison. So what we gonna do about Sweet? See, it's a shitty situation, but I gotta let it play out a little longer, okay? This dialogue is always the same, even if you play the mission after Sweet has been released. You'll fail puncture wounds if the car reaches a garage in Angel Pine. In Monster, the names on the scoreboard are the surnames of five members of the game's development team. David Beddoes, Chris McMahon, Kevin Bolt, Stephen Taylor and Kevin Wong. In Hijack, after Caesar gets in the truck, he'll sit in the passenger seat. If you get in the truck via the passenger door, CJ will pass through Caesar's body. In Interdiction, after you've defended the contraband helicopter, a priest and a prostitute will drive up Arco del Oeste in a journey. Verdant Meadows is one of three story missions that is named after a place in San Andreas. The other missions are Los Sepulchros and Pier 69. In Learning to Fly, if you take too long to complete the flying lessons, you'll receive some additional phone calls from Torino. In NOE, the Hydras are not being flown by the military, they're actually being flown by the old pedestrians dressed in purple with dark glasses. You'll fail stowaway if the guard with the parachute falls out of the plane. In Black Project, there's a crowbar on a table in the underground facility. This might be a reference to the video game Half-Life, in which the protagonist, Gordon Freeman, escapes from an underground facility while using a crowbar as a weapon. In Green Goo, the train is locked and cannot be entered. In Fender Ketchup, the first person camera view is disabled. In Explosive Situation, you can get rid of the detonation timer by killing the guy who's using his phone, making the mission easier. In You've Had Your Chips, when you destroy the third machine, some enemies will spawn on foot outside, including one with a powerful combat shotgun. However, you can stop these particular enemies from spawning by destroying at least four machines in one go. If done correctly, only the enemies in the car will spawn outside. In Don Quixote, if you try to use a vehicle with only one passenger seat to pick up Paul and Macker, one of them will get in before getting back out and arguing with the other person. Leave him, he'll be fine. We'll come back for you, I promise. Oh no you don't, I remember Preston Gildall. I'm the manager, what I say goes. You're turning the boot, kid. Oh, this is comfy. 
I'm the manager, I'll get the front seat. Oi, that's my seat. You're the manager, so this is all your fault. In intensive care, if the all cars have nitro cheat is enabled, the cutscene at the end of the mission will get stuck after the ambulance reverses. In the meat business, Ken's not the only one who can get trapped in the freezer. It's also possible for you to get trapped in there, forcing Ken to rescue you before your health depletes. Get me out of this freezer, Rosie! And if you both get trapped in the freezer, you get wasted. Fish in a Barrel was originally going to be an actual mission instead of just a cutscene. The mission would have involved protecting Ran Fa Lee from the Mafia, and Woozy would give CJ a golf club. Very useful. In Mad Dog, the Walton becomes bulletproof when you catch Mad Dog. Once the mission is passed, simply take it to your garage. According to the game's text files for Freefall, you were originally supposed to eject from the plane yourself after flying through the corona behind the jet. In Misappropriation, the agents are carrying assault rifles, but once you've killed the target, they use micro SMGs instead. In High Noon, the final cutscene won't play if Pulaski drowns. In St. Mark's Bistro, your target's full name is Marco Ferrelli. This can be found in the game's text files and audio files. Marco Ferrelli, I'm here for you! Marco, I'm coming for you! If you fail architectural espionage by refusing to put your weapons away, or by photographing the blueprints without causing a distraction, you'll get busted. However, your time's busted stat won't increase. You'll fail key to her heart if you take off the gimp suit before parking outside Millie's house. Strangely, you won't fail the mission if you remove it after parking outside. The door's open, master. In Damon Blast, you can actually use any aircraft to fly through the Corona. Simply get in and out of the Nevada and get in a different aircraft. The Corona will appear in the sky once you're close enough. However, CJ won't automatically jump out. If you fail cop wheels, you can make the driver get out of the parker. But the other guy will remain stuck outside the passenger door unless you store the truck in a garage. Also, he's invincible. In Up Up and Away, it's possible to obtain a minigun with unlimited ammo. Get the jetpack and fly to the gun emplacement near the helicopter. Stand on the red marker, then start ascending and at the same time repeatedly press the exit vehicle button. If done correctly, you will now have a minigun with unlimited ammo. Well, actually it's thousands and thousands of bullets, which is still a hell of a lot. During the opening cutscene in Breaking the Bank at Caligula's, the armoured van has the Caligula's logo on it. But at every other point in the mission, the Caligula's logo isn't there. Hey, CJ, calm down! You better take me home, CJ. In a home in the hills, if you shoot one of the parachuting triads until his health indicator turns black, he will die shortly after landing, and the mission will fail. In Vertical Bird, a launch drives inside the aircraft carrier. Cannot help you. Well, can you help me now? Uh, well, no. Actually, no. If you destroy the launch before this happens, the game will crash after you go inside.
In Homecoming, when you provoke the gang war, only Grove Street will flash red on the radar, and it will also be the only territory that will turn green once you've won the war. However, once the mission is passed, all of Ganton will be under your control. Where we going, sweet? Some place we can get old bear back! Alright, I'm down for that. At the end of Beat Down on Beat Up, Sweet takes Big Bear to rehab, but originally, CJ would have taken him there, not Sweet. CJ, you take care of Bear, okay? Yeah, for sure. Come on, Bear. Time for a little detox. Oh man, do I have to? If you take over the Ballas territories in Idlewood before starting Grove for Life, the Ballas will regain control of those territories, forcing you to take over them again. After completing cutthroat business, the price of some clothing items at Victim will change. The Lockdown t-shirt and vest will become cheaper, and the Mad Tag and Green Tag shirts will become more expensive. In the Brady Game Strategy Guide, Jethro can be seen in a screenshot for Riot, which implies that he was going to be in the mission's opening cutscene before being removed. In Los Desperados, if you recruit three Grove Street gang members instead of two and go to Unity Station on your own, the red marker will still be there, even though the game tells you that you've left Caesar behind. Slow down, Carl. Those vagos, man, I'm gonna cut those cacos. In the BMX challenge, if you collect a checkpoint just before the time runs out, the clock will disappear and you'll have an unlimited amount of time to collect the remaining checkpoints. You can also do this during the NRG 500 challenge. In the Chiliad challenge, if your opponents beat you to the finish line, you can still win by killing them with a sniper rifle. In 8-track, if you destroy your opponent's cars, they'll just respawn near the starting line. In Blood Bowl, the arena looks very similar to the one used in Blood Ring in Vice City. In Dirt Track, you can kill your opponents without being disqualified. In Kickstart, the highest possible score is 61 points. You can achieve this by collecting every Corona in the arena. In Taxi Driver, there are two destinations called the Airport in Los Santos. One is near the area where you can buy plane tickets, and the other is at the big roundabout. In Paramedic, if you flip the ambulance onto its side, the patients will get out after a while, and the game will still think they've been rescued when you go to the hospital. Ten different vehicles can be used for Vigilante. Police car, Ranger, HPV-1000, Enforcer, FBI Rancher, FBI Truck, Barracks, Rhino, Hunter, and SWAT Tank. Well, technically 12 if you also count the variations of the police car. There are two variants of the fire truck in this game, but the one with the ladder cannot be used for firefighter. In pimping, make sure you drive carefully because injuring a customer will cause the mission to fail. By default, the camera will be in cinematic mode when you're in a train, but sometimes when you start the freight mission and then cancel it, you'll get a third-person view of the train. In the courier missions, you can kill people by throwing the packages at them. What the hell do the packages contain? Bricks? In the trucking missions, the trailer can sometimes shake violently and detach itself from the cab.
You'll fail valet parking if you input a cheat that changes CJ's outfit. In the first quarry mission, you can also use explosives to push the rocks into the red markers. However, it won't count until you get back in the bulldozer and drive close enough. In the second quarry mission, if you or the bulldozer are too far away from the red marker when the final bomb touches it, the game will crash. The third quarry mission is the only one that involves combat. In the fourth quarry mission, after you get in the dumper, you can reach the fire more quickly by just driving off the edge. In the fifth quarry mission, one bullet is all it takes to destroy the dumper. In the sixth quarry mission, the train travels at a much higher speed than other trains. In the seventh quarry mission, once you've pushed the bike or the body, but not both, into the red marker, if you use the crane to pick up that object, it will get stuck in the air. Furthermore, the body will sometimes become flat like paper. Out of all the schools in the game, the driving school has the most tests. According to the Brady Game Strategy Guide, the boat school is unlocked by completing Pier 69 and then receiving a phone call, which is incorrect. However, it does imply that Bayside, where Boat School takes place, was originally going to be unlocked at an earlier point in the story. At the pilot school, CJ is wearing a different type of parachute backpack in the video for the parachute onto target lesson. The bike school has an unused interior. If you recruit a gang member and then start a race, He'll spawn at the starting line before trying to get in your vehicle. Hey, get in the car, After completing Customs Fast Track, you'll unlock a side mission that involves delivering vehicles that are wanted for export. If you leave the crane magnet just above the red marker on the ship, and then drive a vehicle into the marker, the magnet will attach itself to the vehicle, which will suddenly get suspended in the air. Amusingly, during the cutscene, CJ will get out of the vehicle and fall onto the ship. Oh, shit. During the pistol and micro SMG rounds at the shooting range, if you turn the camera around to face the wall behind you, CJ's arm will pass through his body. One of the tasks required for 100% completion is learning new fighting moves at the gyms. If you leave the ring while fighting, you will lose access to your weapons. However, you can fix this by simply leaving the gym. If you steal a total of $10,000 worth of loot by playing Burglar, you'll gain the ability to sprint without getting tired. In Big Smoke's cache, the Patriot is bulletproof, fireproof, explosion-proof and melee-proof. If you'd like to know how to store it in your garage, check the video description for the link to a very helpful guide. In Ye Courier, the Courier's backpack is actually the blue parachute backpack. In Beat the Cock, you can use a vortex instead of swimming. Be careful not to run over your opponents, otherwise you'll be disqualified. In the Lowrider Challenge, the woman in the passenger seat will react to your performance if you're using a savannah. If you have any other Lowrider, she'll just sit there doing nothing. In the dancing minigame, you must score a certain amount of points to unlock the next song. There are three songs in total. There are some unused voice clips which imply that originally, CJ would have said something upon taking over an enemy gang territory. 
Let's listen to some of them. East Los Santos is ours now. Glen Park is our hood now, punks. Idlewood is GSF for life. Jefferson belong to Grove Street now. A fool Los Colinas is falling. Temple is ours now. It's possible to obtain one of Berkeley's RC vans by playing Beefy Baron. Land the plane on the street, wait until a van is outside the shop, then press the self-destruct button to end the mission. Quickly run outside, and if done correctly, a van should be in the area. Oh, you're too kind. At some of the basketball courts, you can press the look behind button to start a minigame, in which you have to score as many points as you can before the time runs out. This can be done at the basketball courts in East Los Santos, Playa del Seville, and the Camel's Toe. The AI pool players cannot be stealth killed. They Crawled From <clears throat> Uranus is the only arcade game that doesn't have its own cabinet. It uses Gogo Space Monkey's cabinet instead. A Gogo Space Monkey arcade cabinet can be seen in a pre-release screenshot for GTA 4, implying that it was removed during GTA 4's development. Let's Get Ready to Bumble is the only arcade game with the Rockstar North logo on its cabinet. Duality is the only arcade game in which the title and options are not always in the same place at the main menu. In video poker, you might recognise the pictures on the Jack, Queen and King cards. Yep, it's artwork of characters from GTA 3 and Vice City. This is also the case with the Blackjack cards. In Roulette, there's a trick that can allow you to win money quite easily. Simply place one chip on the numbered spots and between them as well, until you've placed the max wager, then spin the wheel. This doesn't always work, so make sure you save first. If you cause trouble inside a casino, only the slot machines will still be available. The blonde croupier is never seen at the Wheel of Fortune tables. In the inside track betting shops, one of the horses is called Henrik's Jaw. This is a reference to Swedish football player Henrik Larsson, who suffered a broken jaw in 2003 when playing for Scottish football team Celtic. And finally, End of the Line is divided into three parts. Part 1 involves going to the Crack Palace and killing Big Smoke. Part 2 involves escaping from the building. And Part 3 involves chasing Tempenny. If you fail the mission during Part 2 and then start the mission again, Part 1 will be skipped. And Part 2 will be skipped if you fail the mission during Part 3. Phew, so there you have it. That was one fact about every mission in GTA San Andreas. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and stay solid.